Thank you for joining me on my masterclass. Today we're talking about how to come up with million dollar business ideas for the year 2022. How to come up with million dollar business ideas for the year 2022. This is the first day of December of 2021. So now we're approaching the year 2022. And so the world is getting more intelligent, smarter, ideas are coming. So poverty does not have to be your thing in the year 2022. However, you're not going to break out from that cycle of poverty that we see all over the third world, in Asia, in India, Bangladesh, in Africa. You're not going to go out of that poverty by the same kind of thinking that we've had over the past years, over the past decades. We have to come up with a different kind of thinking and that's the way we're going to get multi-million dollar business ideas for the year 2022. You know, I hate poverty. I hate poverty a lot. You know, I've defeated it in my life and I want to defeat it in the life of others. And I'm not going to do that by throwing money at it like I did in the past. I've learned, a, I mean, a very, very huge lesson from that. You only create dependency. I'm only going to do that by teaching people how to fish. And that's what I've dedicated the rest of my life to doing. So without further ado, how do we come up with million dollar ideas for the year 2022? It's quite simple, really. You see, businesses, ideas, and you have to understand money for those ideas, they come when people are complaining. So you see, where you see people complaining, and you know, a lot of people like to complain, the vast majority of people on planet Earth, especially poor people, like to complain. Where you see people complaining, where you see people complaining, don't join them in their pity party. Don't join them. Listen attentively. Listen attentively. When you when you hear people complaining, oh, there's there's what we know like um, the food stuff are so expensive this uh, uh, festive season. You know things like that. Wow, you know mobile phones are so they're so expensive. Who can buy them? You know nobody can afford them. Oh my gosh, the price of world is just astronomical. You know like when you hear people complaining, whatever it is, listen, listen to them, because when you listen to people complaining, and you provide solutions. To their complaints that's how businesses are born that's how businesses are born every business every business is a solution to problems and it's in my book start solving problems start solving problems my book you know it was a bestseller i wrote it last year you know and then immediately you know it's um it sold out on amazon and then on Barnes and nobles and everywhere we had to now do a second print and a third print if you haven't read that book read that book start solving problems that's how you get multi-million dollar business ideas people are always complaining don't join them and first of first of all you should never complain complaining is a bad habit it's a very very bad habit but when people are complaining listen to them every business is a solution that's not you know, I, I take that back every successful business is a solution to problems you think about uber go and just research how uber was founded uber did not just come into the minds of the founders of uber no 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 there was an event it was an event first it was in i think it was in paris because i researched this it was in paris and then they also had a, a, another event in san francisco they had difficulties getting taxes they had difficulties getting taxes and you know everybody was complaining i think they went for a conference in paris everybody was complaining and then they had a similar one in san francisco all the other people were complaining and then they listened to those complaints and then they came up with the idea for uber because the complaint shows that there is a need because people only complain where there is a need that has not been met if you don't have a need you're not going to complain you're just going to be content so complaining exposes a need Udacity, how did Udacity come about? The founder of Udacity experienced problems with the high college tuition fees. College is just university in America, so that's how they call it. With the high university um, fees, they call it in England, top up fees, top up fees. So she was, I mean, really, really upset about that. And then they came up with Udacity. Udacity is like an online university that is so easy, you know, almost free. So you think about that. All, all that, I'm telling you, almost every problem. What about Netflix? The founders of Netflix, they were complaining about how expensive it was to go and watch movies at the box office, to go and watch movies at the, at the cinema. 
It was so expensive. And said, okay, how can they find an inexpensive way, not just for themselves, but for other people? Because they had people complaining. Their friends were complaining. You know, they turned on the TV. People were complaining on late night shows, on the news. And they found a solution. They listened to the complaints. They, there was a need. And they met it. What about Square? Square, how did Square come about? They found out Square was trying to set up a business. And then, you know, it cost at that time something like between six to seven thousand dollars to get a POS, you know, um, a point of sale uh, machine. You know, uh, it was so expensive. And they said, look, well, you know, no, this is ridiculous. We must be able to find a way to, to uh, overcome this. A lot of people were complaining. A lot of businesses were complaining. A lot of small businesses were complaining. A lot of what they call them in America, uh, mommy, uh, mama and papa businesses. Those are small businesses. They were complaining. And then they came up with Square. And then, so Square is so easy. Eh? Everybody can get Square. And in fact, they send Square, the POS to you for free. Now, they have a business. A, I mean, a, bi a billion dollar business. What about Airbnb? What about Airbnb? The founders of Airbnb, Joe Gerbia and Brian Chesky, what happened? They had difficulty paying the exorbitant rents that they were having in the California area that they lived in. And then their friends were also complaining to them. And then their friends' friends were also complaining to them. All the people that they were moving together, they were complaining. And they listened to that complaint. They listened to it. And they said, okay, what, what we can do? They came up with Airbnb. They started it better, small. It started to grow, started to grow, started to grow. Now it's all over the world. It's also in your country. If you live in Tanzania, it's in your country. If you live in Kenya, it's in your country. If you live in Nigeria, Ghana, it's in your country. Everywhere. Cambodia, Thailand, Dubai, everywhere. Airbnb. It came about as a solution to problems. What about WhatsApp? WhatsApp, Igor Solemnikov, Igor Solemnikov, which he was the, the coder that actually came up with the idea. How did he come up with the idea? He was a Russian immigrant. And then you do, they moved to, um, to California. A, a lot of them were broke. And they couldn't pay the high cost of sending text. So he, the guy was a coder. He came up with this brilliant um, coding application that allowed them to send text to everybody in that, their Russian community. And then when Brian Atum and Jan Kuhn were looking for a coder to help them start WhatsApp, they found him. And that's how. He was hearing his people complain. He found a solution. So that's how. Listen to when people are complaining. For instance, this festive season, if people are complaining, oh my gosh, the price of rice is too high. The price of rice is too high. It's an opportunity for you. It's an opportunity for you. If you are in uh, Kenya, if you are in Kenya, because I know that in Kenya, there are rice regions. You know, I know that in, um, in Tanzania, there are places where you can get rice, you know. And so if you're in Ghana, same thing, Dido, you just listen. Oh, people are complaining. It's an opportunity for you. Go to the rural areas of your country. Buy rice inexpensively. Bring them to the cities. I know that in Ghana, they've got a good train system. In Nigeria, Nigeria just developed there as where you can get a train all the way from Kanu, or from Kanu all the way to Lagos. Get rice. Stop complaining with them. Stop saying, ah, this government is useless. So, the government might be useless. Yes, it might be. But you, by hearing people complain, you have a solution. Go and find it. And then you're going to become wealthy. That's how Dangote became the wealthiest black man on the planet. The wealthiest black African, uh, whether um, black person, whether African American or black or Caribbean, just by fulfilling that, uh, uh, um, fulfilling, fulf filling that need that people had for rice. You know, he was hearing the complaint, hearing the complaint, he now said to um, uh, import rice. And then, you know, the thing there is this, is that when you are meeting a need, don't just be a trader. Because here's how a trader behaves. Uh, people need orange. Bam, 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 bam. You buy oranges, you bring to the market, you sell. You can start that way, but don't just be a trader. Be an entrepreneur. Be an entrepreneur. Buy the oranges. What's the difference between a trader and an entrepreneur? A trader just buys without adding value, brings to the market, sells it. So he maybe he buys the oranges for one dollar. He brings them to the market, sells them for two dollar fifty. So he's made one dollar fifty profit. Don't think, think even beyond that. Think like an entrepreneur. Go buy the oranges. Yes, buy them. Bring them to where you are, and then make oranges. Make oranges with your oranges that you bought. And then you sell the oranges from one orange for ten dollars, and so you've added value, and that value that you, you've added has increased your profit by about eight hundred percent. So you think about that. If you if you getting rice, 
You know, do like what Dango decided to do. In, instead of just initially he was getting rice and he said, okay, what, what, what am I doing? What am I doing? What I'm going to do, I'm going to buy, I'm going to get bags. I'm going to get bags. He said getting bags and then bagging them. So he'll get rice from Thailand, bag them in Dangote rice. Give me one second. I'll be right back. I had to put on my head on. Now, so he'll buy rice, he'll buy rice and then he'll bag them. Just by bagging them, he was able to increase his profit. Just by bagging rice, he was able to increase his profit. And then, what else did he do? You know, after that, he said to buy rice itself, but not just rice that had already been milled. He said to get rice and then mill it himself. And then he, he, he increased his profit. And then, what did he start to do? He said to get his own rice uh, paddies, his own rice fields, to grow their own uh, his own rice. And then he said to, I mean, he, he took over everything from the uh, beginning of that supply chain to the end of the supply chain. Think like that. Think like that. That's how you're going to become wealthy in the year 2022. That's how I've become wealthy. I have problems that I'm solving for people media problems, communication problems, strategic problems. And then, by solving those problems, I become wealthy enough to travel. You know, I'm on my way right now to, uh, to Bermuda. I should be there, God willing, uh, very soon. But I said, I have to do this video before I go. And I love you. Now, remember, if you have questions, if you have questions, put them in the comment section of this video. Or you can go to my social media profiles and put them there. My staff and I were very, very good at responding to questions. And then you have to remember, I do not have a WhatsApp forum. I do not have a Telegram channel. I do not have a Gmail account. These guys who are coming, um, downloading my photos and then putting, responding to people, luring them, you know, very, very guerrilla tactics, they are scammers. They scam a lot of people, leading them to depression. Do not fall for them. They are not me. You know, you click on their, um, on their YouTube uh, stuff that they are using to respond to you, you find out that they've got uh, five uh, uh, subscribers and they were registered yesterday. They are not me. Don't fall for that. My name is Wagner Mokri. Thank you for watching and God bless you. Don't understand these things. We'll continue being both busted and disgusted. 